My interest in ICT really started back when I worked uh, for a trade union. I didn't go to university, so I, I didn't know about the internet before about 1993. Uh, but when I did become aware of it, I was really struck by the potential of the medium to break down the normal power relationships, if you like, in society. Part of the work I did with the union was prepare a lot of their, their magazines, uh, their bulletins, their brochures. And that gave me a bit of an insight into, um, I, I suppose, desktop publishing, graphic design when it came out of the shop and onto the desktop. I learned about the internet on the job and was fascinated as to what it could provide. And in the really early days started, I suppose, cutting and pasting HTML, marking up very flat single pages, trying to develop a, a little bit of skill in publishing on the internet, which is exciting and the pages weren't very good but it started something that I was able to follow through when I was later elected in Parliament and for me coming into Parliament in 1996 I felt that this issue was incredibly important the, the internet the whole digital age where we were going what it was going to mean for us both economically and socially and I was really itching to join the debate but in Parliament in 1996, I was shocked to find there wasn't much of a debate at all. Um, not, not much was being said, um, hardly any of um, parliamentarians really knew what the internet was uh, and what it could do. So it was a, a fantastic time to start really arguing the case for the implications of the digital age. And with the advent of the dot-com boom, yes, that arrived with a pretty healthy dose of political cynicism about whether or not the internet was a fad or not. But coming uh, into the issues in the way that I did started to show that there was not only substance to the role that ICT could play, but over time it will become more and more central to how and why and the wherefores of public policy and how we made the most of our prospects as a nation. You can appreciate as the world became more and more globalised, Australia's relationship with the rest of the world was enhanced by, by being online. It shut down some of those geographical barriers that Australia has long endured in our trade relationships and opened new doors for a generation of online entrepreneurs who could export to the world through that pipe, through the bandwidth that was afforded us as a nation. So all of this meant that I started to, to look at different facets of ICT policy, whether it was the, the network and the bandwidth required, campaigning for many years for higher bandwidth networks, so you can appreciate why I'm so enthusiastic about uh, the National Broadband Network and the, the policy that Federal Labor has announced in that regard but also participation, the closing of the digital divide, how we skill up people in this country to be able to participate in an online environment, uh, moving on to what we actually do with it. Government services online, cross spheres of government and through different portfolios like health and education. And then there's the creative in industries. What we do with, uh, with bits and bytes, uh, whether it's filmmaking, post-production, incredible software and applications, uh, the games development sector, Australia really does have enormous strengths that I think for a long period of time were under-recognised for their economic importance. These are growth sectors and now that we're in a recession, the opportunities for growth in the future are more important than ever. So in terms of these vodcasts, it really is about dialogue. So can I encourage you to either post your own vodcast back and, and make this a real conversation, or at least provide your opinions through comments uh, on my website. I'd certainly appreciate that, and it starts to make the dialogue genuine rather than me talking at you uh, through the, the medium of a vodcast.